Hi everyone, let's work through this demonstration where we'll take a look at journalizing posting in preparing a trial balance. Okay, the problem we're working on is uh, P3-6B and we're dealing with the digital company and we have some data as of September 30th. We have a trial balance and we have it looks like seven transactions for the month of October. Okay, now I'm going to start right in on the uh, part B, which is to journalize the transactions, including explanations. So let's look at that first one, which appears just to the right of my mouse here. And I'll move over here, so from now on I'll, I'll indicate it to the left. Okay, on October 5th, we received 1300 in cash from a customer for accounts receivable due. Okay, so let's put in the date right here in our general journal. We'll put that in as a 5 and we'll debit an account called cash because that's what we received and we'll indent a little bit and credit accounts receivable because we are receiving cash and we should be lowering the receivable balance and it's thirteen hundred dollars okay nope oh, thirteen hundred let me take care of a little bit of formatting here we'll make all of this uh, with no decimal places We'll move on. Okay, now the next transaction to the left of my mouse. On October 10th, we billed the customers for services performed for 3500 So on the 10th, um, we're going to show the receivable increasing, right? We billed the customer, so they haven't paid yet. We'll increase accounts receivable, if I can type that correctly, 3500 We know we've got a credit of 3500 I'll indent to show the credit, and the credit goes to um, a revenue account. Call it service revenue. Now, on both of these, we should really indicate what it's for. So in this one would be to record collections from customers on account. And in this one we should indicate what it's for and we'll say it's uh, to bill customers for services provided. Okay, that should explain it. Let's take a look at the 15th. We pay employees salaries of $1,200. So on the 15th, we're going to debit an account called Salaries Expense. Okay, we'll debit Salaries Expense for $1,200. We will uh, ignore taxes for now. And we're probably going to credit an account called uh, Salaries Payable, but in this problem, they tell us on the 15th we're actually paying it, so we'll assume it's paid with cash. And uh, our note should be, say something like to record um, employee salaries. Okay, now we're at the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to uh, scroll up a little bit. Okay, now on the 17th, we perform $600 of services for customers who paid in advance. They paid in August. So that meant they, we originally received cash and credited an unearned revenue account. Now we have to reduce that unearned revenue account by debiting it, right? $600 reducing our liability because we're fulfilling our obligations by performing the services. We'll credit service revenue. For that $600, we'll actually record that to the income statement. And we will say to per, uh, actually to, what do we want to say? To record um, entry for services performed for customers that paid in advance. Uh, who paid in advance? 
Okay, so we've recorded the entry on the 17th. Now, the 20th, we have another entry. And I'll slide again so we have a little bit more room. What happens on the 20th? We paid $1,100 to creditors for accounts payable due. Okay, let's do the easy side first, the cash, right? We pay cash, so we know that there's that's a credit, reducing the cash balance. The debit, then, would be to an accounts payable, which reduces our obligation to our vendors and suppliers that uh, allowed us to buy goods and services on open account. Okay, so... Um, we need to say on this one it's to pay creditors on account. Now let's tackle the 29th. On the 29th we pay a $500 cash dividend. Again I'll do the easy part first. Credit cash, reducing cash for $500 and we'll use an account called uh, dividends. We'll debit that for $500, which is, uh, if you will, a temporary uh, stockholder's equity account. We'll eventually close that into retained earnings. But for now, we'll use a separate account called dividends. And we will say to pay cash dividends as a description of what we did. Okay, then we have one last bill on the 31st. And I'll scroll again so that we can uh, see that on the 31st. Um, we need to pay utilities of $700. Again, the easy part of this is going to be the cash. Oh, let me move this down here so that we uh, are consistent and keep a space between every transaction. We'll credit cash. That's the easy part first. And we're going to debit an expense account called utilities expense. Okay. Put that there, $700. Move my mouse out of the way, and we will say uh, to, to pay dividends. Excuse me, to pay the utilities. All right, now that's part B. Now, what I want to do is uh, just review a little bit of part A, maybe just talk about the cash. We've had a lot of tra cash transactions. We increased cash when we collected it there. On the 15th, we uh, reduced cash by $1,200. Then we reduced cash by another $1,100 to pay off creditors on account. We reduced it another $500 for dividends. Okay, we, well, I'm going to move over to the other page now so we can see uh, what actually occurred in Part A and also Part C, where we'll post these to the to the to the um, to the general ledger, but I'm not going to cover all the accounts. Okay, so now I've flipped over to another tab in Excel, and what I want to do is concentrate here on the cash account. Maybe I'll make that in yellow so you can see we're just concentrating on cash now. Well, we had an opening balance of 8,500. That came from that to the left of my mouse right there. Okay, then we recorded an increase on the fifth of 1,300. That appears in that cell right there. Then on the 15th, we used cash of 1200 On the 20th, we used cash of 1100 On the 29th, we used cash of 500 to pay dividends. And on the 31st, we used cash of 700 to pay the utilities. And all of those transactions came from what we've already completed, right? There's the 1300 increase, then the 1200 decrease, right? Then the 1100 decrease, the 500 to pay dividends, and the 700 to pay utilities. Oh, and I, oh, excuse me. I see I've, got, I've written that on the. Uh, no, no, it's on the right line. I'm just uh, eyeballing it wrong there. Okay, let's go back. So now, since we know we're using uh, a T account to represent the general ledger, we start off with 8500 on the left. That's our debit. Any other debits go on the left, credits go on the right, and we need to compute the balance. Well, it's 6,300, but how do we get that? Well, you could say equal the beginning plus any increases minus any decreases. So why don't I subtract these out one at a time? And, of course, you could do this lots of ways in Excel. But now you can see there, 
uh, in the screen that it's essentially taking the beginning balance plus the 1300 minus the others, and we come up with that $6,300. Now, we would do the same type of procedure on every account, whether it was accounts receivable or supplies uh, or equipment. Okay? So now, using that information, let's solve part D, which is create the trial balance. Well, what we need to do is take the, the amount of the balances from the accounts above and just list them on a trial balance. Debits appear on the left, credits on the right. Now, I don't, I don't have all the accounts for you to see, but I'll slide up and show you that the 6300, okay, see it appearing on your screen now, shows up as the 6300 in cash. I'll slide back down, accounts receivable, the 4400 shows up right there as 4400. Let's just look at accounts payable now. Uh, let me put it on the screen. Accounts payable started off with a balance of 5000. Now that came from right here in the left of my mouse, given at the beginning balance or the ending balance from the month before. Um, and then as we're producing October statements, we need to consider what transactions we had. We had a payment of $5,000, right? But, uh, I'm sorry, we had a 5000 opening balance, and then uh, we paid 1100 off of it, leaving us a balance of 3900 Well, the 3900 then appears right there. Okay, well, that's the technique. And if you work through all of the accounts, if you lay out all the accounts you had, your debit should equal the credits, and the answer to Part D should appear